and we are live. Hello everyone and welcome to Dunhumby's Women in Tech event. We're just going to give it a couple of minutes just before we get started. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for tuning in and joining us today at this time. Um, my name's Daisy Kent. I work for a company called Hacker Job, and we are so delighted to be sponsoring today's event. And we're joined by some amazing panelists. Um, how are we finding the weather today, guys? It's pretty gloomy where I am in London. Yes. Yeah, same here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> not great. I've got my uh, desk positioned in front of a window so I can look out and you know get some natural light. None of that today. <laughs> <laughs> Oh dear. Um, okay, so I'm going to introduce everyone just while we're waiting for people to get in. I know that this was quite a heavily subscribed event, um, so we're just waiting for a few more people to join before we get started. Um, but like I say, I'm Daisy Kent, and today I am joined by Alison Williams, Global Head of Data at Dunhumby, Catherine Aker, Software Developer at Dunhumby, Shruti Agarwal, Applied Data Science Manager, Manjiri Saraf, Lead Engineer, and Mariama, Commander, Applied Data Scientist. And we're also joined as well by two members of Don Humby's brilliant uh, recruitment team, Mira Pankania and Madison Pampush. So we're really, really excited to have everyone on board and kind of joining us today. Um, I think, shall we get started? I think what we'll do is I'll give a brief introduction of how the session is going to work today, and then we'll kind of get straight into it. So. First of all, we're going to hear from Alison and she's going to share an overview of Dunhumby and her journey in the business. And then we're going to hear from each of our panellists, so Catherine, Shruti, Manjiri and Mariama, who are going to give us an introduction to themselves and their background and, you know, talking about why they joined Dunhumby as well. We'll then hear from Mira and Madison, who will be sharing a recruitment overview at Dunhumby, you know, best practices, how you can apply, that kind of thing. And we'll finish with a panel Q&A and I'll be moderating the questions. So if you guys have any questions at all, please feel free to share them in the Q&A and we will try and answer as many as we can. Um, so Alison, if we could start with you. Yeah, great. Thanks, Daisy. Um, so my name is Alison Williams. I'm the Global Head of Data at Dunhumby. Um, so as Daisy explained, I'm going to give a brief overview of what Dunhumby does um, and then tell you a bit about my career there um, and then end with um, kind of some of the reasons that I've stayed at Dunhumby for as long as I have. Uh, and I'll be part of the panel. So I'm, I'm looking forward to taking some questions after that. Um, so I'm going to uh, just get a few slides up. This is the, the kind of the corporate bit just to show you um, a bit about what and Humby is all about. So hopefully you can see those. Yeah. Um, okay, so essentially Dunhumby is a, a data science company. Um, we really focus in on customer data and we mainly work with clients in the retail space. Um, and so um, as I'm sure you can all imagine, retailers create a huge amount of data just through the kind of standard operations um, of running a business, stocking the shelves, um, getting customers into store and online. And so um, our role really is to partner with them to help them take all of that data and turn it into actionable insights that can really help them put the customer at the heart of all of their decision making. So that could be about um, how they engage directly with that customer or their strategy around kind of how they um, create a customer experience in store online. And um, we really uh, we really focus on the, the kind of collaboration element as well uh, between retailers and suppliers. So um, suppliers in this sense would be like CPGs and FMCGs. And um, we know that both retailers and suppliers are trying to talk to the same customers. They want the same outcome, which is to make that, that experience of the customer the most relevant and most personalized that it can be um, to help drive sales and, and um, increase engagement. So what we do is really try and bring them together with the data and the insights at the heart of that so that they can make decisions based on what's right for that customer and what's most relevant to that customer. So the benefit is increased sales for them, but also for the retailer, um, it really helps uh, create a new revenue stream. So as I said, they're creating all this data as a byproduct of what they do. And through this, they can actually start monetizing it with suppliers. So that's a kind of core part of the way that we work with both suppliers and retailers. Um, so what we try and do are the products and services that we offer to our clients are really designed to help um, 
the retailers and, and the suppliers uh, increase the engagement through the whole customer life cycle. So that could be starting um, right from uh, a customer being at home, looking online, doing a dot com shop or, or uh, browsing a website and um, trying to make sure that what they're seeing online is really the most relevant content to them. Um, so that could be about recipes, search um, or, or marketing, advertising. Um, and then also through the other channels that they're seeing uh, and have exposure to outside of the home and then right through to the in-store experience. And this might be, again, the kind of marketing messages they're getting, but also um, it's about the, the whole in-store experience. So what kind of products are on the shelves? Is it the right um, set of, of um, products that are relevant for that customer, that those groups of customers? Are they at the right price point? Are we offering the right kinds of promotions that are going to appeal to those customers? Um, in terms of our reach, um, we are a global company. We're working with um, retailers across the globe. Um, and then that's both in terms of kind of operations and um, uh, working with clients. So we have teams based in most of the countries where we've got clients working directly with them, quite often positioned in, in offices with them. Um, and then also we have um, uh, some development hubs across uh, different areas. So we've got one in the US, a couple in the UK, Germany, and a, a big development hub in uh, Gagaon, just outside Delhi in India. Um, and as you can imagine, this global footprint of clients creates a huge amount of data for us. So um, we feel incredibly qualified to be talking to you today about um, you know, uh, women in technology because we, we've got um, lots of people working on this vast amount of data that coming in and using cutting edge technology and, and techniques to really turn this into the, the insights and the, the actions um, that I talked about um, through our products and services. So um, really what we do is, is take all of that data, the transactions data, the, um, the loyalty scheme data, all of the contextual data around products that have been sold, where they're being sold, like stores or, or online experience, marketing information, price informational information. Um, and we really try and transform that and restructure it into something that's optimized for our very big data science community to access. So they could start um, interrogating that data, finding those insights, and also turning those into um, uh, algorithms or, or um, products and services that can be repeatedly used at scale and in a much more efficient way. Um, we then have our product engineering teams that are working on um, going that step further and turning that into a, a real software product that we can sell to clients and um, deploy at scale across that, that global reach. The kinds of technologies that we use, um, we work uh, predominantly in the cloud um, and we, uh, we use a lot of open source technology. So I'm sure the, the kinds of things that many people on this call will be familiar with, Python, Spark, Jupyter, um, .NET, C++. So it's, um, uh, it, it's kind of all the, all the names I'm sure you're familiar with. That, that's what we're trying to use and, and make sure that we can bring in people that have got experience um, with those kinds of languages. So hopefully that gives you uh, a bit of a taste for what Dunhumby is about. Um, I'm going to stop sharing now and just talk to you more about um, my experience at Dunhumby. So um, I joined Dunhumby as a graduate uh, over 15 years ago now. Um, I studied economic history at university. And um, one of the things that really um, interested me about my studies was this connection and this relationship between data and human behavior, that essentially when you're looking at data and a lot of statistics, it, it feels like there are forces behind that. And essentially it comes down to individuals making individual choices. And it's really about kind of human nature. And um, when I was looking around at various um, uh, graduate schemes, Dunhumby caught my eye because of this this um, connection between kind of the data that we're gathering from our clients, which is essentially human behavior and how we're turning that into actions and insights that, that commercial companies could use. So um, I applied for the um, graduate scheme and I, I joined the um, technical program. So I had a, a basically a crash course in technology. I hadn't 
done anything uh, in this space before. I, as I said, I did economic history, so I, I didn't have any kind of computing or stats background. Um, so I was very quickly put on a course to learn um, base SAS, which is what we used in those days for coding. Um, I had to learn the kind of fundamentals of data warehousing, of ETL. Um, we did a lot of um, manual targeting at that point as well. And um, for our, our big client in the UK, it was Tesco. So um, I learned a lot of kind of, of of the real basics because of the the coding language we were using. It was it really had to kind of learn um, the the fundamentals of it because there was there were no UIs to to kind of help you through that. Um, so it gave me a really good foundation in technology and the way that we use data, and um, that has really kind of seen me through the through my career um, having that kind of core understanding right from the start. Um, what I quite quickly understood was that I had a fairly uh, kind of rare skill set that I, although I could understand the technical side of things, um, I also uh, could understand the commercial side of things and I could translate quite well between those two worlds. And actually that that's quite hard to find. And I found this when I'm recruiting myself. And so um, I, in my later roles, I started moving away from the very kind of tech focused roles and started um, going into more of uh, roles that straddled both of those worlds. Um, so I um, I moved into a deployment role. So I was deploying. I was uh, managing the deployment of our flagship product, the shop. Uh, we were rolling that out to uh, nine international markets in parallel, which we'd never done before. So it was a, a huge challenge, um, really exciting one. Um, but uh, it was it was a challenge to understand the kind of technical requirements, um, especially when we were working in new countries and we had new considerations around language um, encoding and um, kind of brand new challenges we'd never faced before. And also, um, I got a lot of exposure to things like stakeholder management and understanding kind of the commercial impacts to delays um, and how that would impact the, the way that we were selling some of these products. So it was a really um, rich experience. And it also gave me some really good exposure to senior leadership, which again, I think helped my career in terms of starting to identify like those advocates um, for me and um, really building that network and that sponsorship. Um, I then moved into more of a kind of traditional data management role. It's more in Dunhumby, we'd now call it technical account management. Um, but it was really a role, um, again, straddling those two worlds, trying to understand from the commercial team, what are we trying to deliver to our clients and tra translating that into technical requirements and then working with our data engineering team to make sure those data solutions were being built and optimized in the right way. And also working very closely with our clients and their technical teams to source the right data for what we were trying to do with them. Um, and that I, I stayed in similar roles for quite a few years, but I was given great opportunities to kind of specialize in different areas. So um, I worked on our Asia clients for a while, which was um, really interesting. It was very different from the work we were doing in the UK, um, very different considerations around kind of um, ways of operating, local legislation considerations, uh, again, language considerations. Um, and then uh, I also did a, um, a stint in our media team, uh, which was another huge learning curve. We were just getting into things like programmatic and I had to kind of understand the world of online um, bidding and, and advertising. And then um, uh, and then my last role in that kind of uh, um, area was leading our North America data team. So I actually relocated to Chicago for a couple of years and lived there and, and led our North America team. Again, that was totally different. We were in kind of sales mode. We were trying to build the business up and, and win a lot of new clients. So I was on the road a lot, doing a lot of flights to, to meet with um, clients and do sales pitches, which was re really exciting. And, and again, kind of a new um, angle of that role for me. And then in 2018, um, I was asked to set up our data consulting team. So this is a team where um, we've got a huge amount of data expertise within Dunhumby. Um, and we had been talking to our clients about how to optimize their data strategy for what Dunhumby needed from them. And we realized that actually our clients wanted advice and support in doing that for their own business and to drive value within their own business. So um, I, um, I defined the strategy for, for learning, uh, sorry, for leading that, uh, launching that team and, and leading it um, and mobilizing that team. So it was a brand new capability within Dunhumby. So um, again, that was a really exciting thing to do. It's probably one of my the favorite things I've done at Dunhumby because we were kind of starting from a blank sheet of paper and saying, what could a new service look like to offer to our clients and how would we make this happen and how would we deliver it. 
Um, so after launching that, I went on um, parental leave for a year. Um, and then I returned in 2019 um, into my current role. So I was promoted into my role now, which is Global Head of Data. So I now look after all our data functions. Um, so the data consulting team that I just described, the te technical account management team, um, our data engineering team, and also our client deployment team, who are a um, team of kind of expert um, deployment uh, project managers. Um, and uh, yeah, I often get asked um, why I've stayed at Dunhumby for so long, uh, like 15 plus years. Um, and I think I've, I've kind of boiled it down to three things. Um, one is the opportunities that I've been given. Um, as I've just described, I've had a huge amount of variety in the roles I've done, even though they've all been in technical space and largely with data, um, there's, been, uh, there's been a lot of variety. I've worked with a lot of different types of people, different types of clients, um, and had a kind of slightly different focus in each role. And that, that's really kept me engaged and interested. And it's allowed me to progress and be promoted. So again, um, those opportunities to kind of grow my career have, kept coming, which has been brilliant. Um, the second reason is the talented people. Um, literally every day I'm blown away by some genius I come across in Dunhumby and it has been like that from the start. Um, I'm, I'm a very curious person, it's one of our core values and I'm, I'm, I want to learn, I continuously want to learn and being surrounded by people at every grade, every level, in every role that you can learn from um, is just, makes such a difference to me and I, I don't ever want that to end I want to continue to learn and to grow and so um, being surrounded by really smart talented people has just been such a big factor for me for working at Dunhumby. Um, and the last one is really around our um, customer first ethos and our values and how we deliver that. Um, the nature of how I prefer to work um, is very compatible with our values. I, I really believe strongly in collaboration um, and, and really in passion and, and <clears throat> really going after the things that you believe in. Um, and also on the customer first element, I'm really motivated by um, delivering value to our clients and, and delivering really tangible results. And um, that's been really uh, well respected and, and um, really helped me kind of build my profile in Dunhumby um, and um, really well regarded. So uh, it, it just has been a very compatible mix of kind of the, the core values of Dunhumby and, and what motivates me in workplace. So I will stop there. Thank you so much, Alison. It was so great to le learn not just about Dunhumby, but your journey as well and why you're such an, not just an advocate for the business, but for an advocate of women working in technology as well. So honestly, really, really amazing. Thank you. Thank you. And if anyone has any questions for Alison, please make sure to put them in the Q&A and we will make sure that they are answered. So next we're going to go to um, some of our panellists who are going to kind of give us an introduction into, you know, themselves, their background, why they joined Dom Humby and the roles that they do. Um, so I think we're going to start with Catherine first, please. Hello, um, I'm Catherine Acker. Um, I'm actually located in the Rochester, New York office in the US. Um, I've been at Joan Humby for just short of two years now. Um, I went to Rochester in Institute of Technology for um, web and mobile computing. And actually before that, I had get, gotten another degree in marketing and psychology, a dual degree. Um, but I decided this was a little better for me. Um, the reason I joined Dunhumby in the first place, um, admittedly, when I applied, I didn't really know too much about Dunhumby. Um, but I had worked retail before and I saw retail splashed all over the web page. And I was like, well, maybe I can uh, do this. So um, I did a little more um, research into it and it seemed like they were kind of all over the world. And I thought that was pretty cool. Um, and when I went in for my interview, everyone was really friendly and down to earth. And that was kind of uh, different from a lot of places. So I liked like the feel of the office, I guess. Um, I'm currently a developer. I work on, I work in mostly C Sharp and React doing like REST APIs, that sort of thing. Um, that's what I've do, done the whole time. Um, I've done a little bit of Dev, DevOps type things where 
uh, working with servers and pipelines and all of that. Um, the reason I like working here, um, a lot of what Allison said, where you're just surrounded by a lot of smart people and a lot of different people, and you, you have a lot of opportunities to learn. And um, I actually really like being able to work in an international team. Currently, I'm on a team uh, with like half US people and half UK people. And I feel like that gives a really good opportunity to uh, like kind of spread your reach from like who you're learning from. Um, and um, I also like that they give you a lot of opportunities like to do try different things. There's a lot of different projects and different like sub parts of those projects. Um, and they also, um, Dun Humvee is really invested in their employees and um, their own development, like professionally and as a person. And I really like how kind of invested they are in, yeah, so. Amazing, thank you, Catherine. Really great to hear just such a, sn a short snippet of your journey. Amazing and great for you to join us from across the pond as well. Um, I believe next we are going to Shruti. Oh, I think you're on mute, Shruti. Can there we go. Me? Yep, perfect. Perfect. Um, and I'm not sure what happened. I was talking perfectly before this. Uh, so I said, hi, everyone. I'm Shruti Agarwal. I'm part of this data science community. Uh, and I'm really grateful for the opportunity to talk to all of you today about my journey with Dunhumby and I think Dunhumby is a great place to work. So for me personally, the need to understand the whys and the hows of how have always been a habit for me and which led me to, you know, choose economics and maths in high school, uh, you know, which provided me new perspectives of, uh, you know, comprehending opportunities, analyzing issues, finding solutions. And that led me to study and pursue statistics as a career in my grad and undergrad. Um, my journey with analytics started about 12 years ago when I landed a great internship opportunity with an organization in Bangalore, India, Fidelity Investments. Uh, that was a f my first time working on real data, real problems, and coding on SaaS and finding solutions. And I was hooked and I knew that I had found the purpose of why I wanted to, uh, to pursue a career in analytics. Post my master's, I joined Fidelity back again, got my SAS certifications, uh, and then uh, worked for two years before I landed a great opportunity to interview with Dunhumby. Uh, after several weeks of interviews with Dunhumby and multiple organizations, uh, I was going through different mission statements and vision that a lot of organizations that I was interviewing with. with. And for me, for Dunhumby, the one of the mission was that we use data science to help our retailers and brands succeed. And, and that's when I knew this was a great opportunity. And this was the organization with which I wanted to move to my next professional career move. Uh, so again, now I've been in Dunhumby for now close to nine years, uh, where I started again in our back in our India Gurgaon office. Uh, I, I still remember I was the 167th employee in back in our India office. And now our India office has grown to be about close to, I think probably 600 plus people. Um, five years ago in 2016, I got another wonderful opportunity was to move to our Chicago office and be part of our data science team there. And I again knew that this is where I wanted to move with my Dunhumby opportunity. Uh, again, uh, in the last, last nine plus years that I have been with Dunhumby, I've had the good fortune to work with not just you know, the most brilliant and the talented mind in the business, but also with the support of my managers. I've had uh, been working, I've worked on about eight global clients, uh, you know, migrated through different tech platforms that, you know, Allison mentioned about, you know, started working on SaaS, moved to Exadata, R, Python, and Spark, learning new languages and skills every year as I go. 
and also you know automating processes streamlining our projects getting efficiencies uh, solving myriad and diverse real life problems and most importantly and finally is actually seeing the impact created by my team members and my and me on clients and that was the most satisfying part of my job right like to see what what we're actually working on come to real life and seeing what how to quantify that impact uh, Within our uh, North, uh, within our, I would say, Dunhumbi data science team, there are two halves right now. So there are two paths we can consider to, as, as we navigate through our analytics career is one is a science development, which is made up of our research data scientists and data engineers who are responsible for finding new solutions and products which can be modularized and applied across many clients. And the other half, which I'm a part of, is the science delivery and consulting, which comprises of our applied data science managers. And my role across uh, you know, the clients I've been on is you know, so building and you know, de delivering on an annual client work plan that we've agreed with, uh, spotting opportunities for client engagement growth and renewals, uh, also, very recently, I've had the opportunity to work on RFP responses, right? So again, I'm again, very fortunate to be on this journey for North America, where we're actually figuring out how to win businesses and working on, working on delivering those answers. Uh, lastly, again, with, you know, Allison, a lot of people have asked me why have I decided to be in Dunhumbi for, you know, nine plus years. And uh, I would say it boils down to similar things that Alison kind of mentioned, right? I think for me, Dunhumbi has offered the perfect mix of creativity and pragmatism. You know, I've had I've had the, the opportunity to balance, you know, hands-on working, which involving doing, you know, with intellectually challenging tasks called thinking. Uh, and this balance, uh, you know, surrounded with again talented women and men across the business, learning new skills every year, uh, you know, thriving in a fast-paced environment, which is something that I really truly love. And again, to see everything that we've been doing to have an impact in real life has what made you know Dunhumbi an attractive and wonderful place for me to work with. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. It's brilliant to see already two of our panellists have worked for Dunhumby um, for, you know, not just a couple of years, but really kind of committed to the business and the business is clearly very committed to the both of you, which is incredible. Um, I think next we are hearing from Manjiri. Yeah, hi, can you hear me now? Yep. Yep. So hi, thank you very much for having me here today. And uh, yeah, I'm into Dunhambi for uh, not so long. Uh, I would say I'm the uh, you know most recent member of Dunhambi, but uh, there is definitely a reason why I am at Dunhambi. So I'm graduated as uh, uh, as electronics engineer, and then I started my career in software development with a multinational company in India. And then I have overall uh, 17 plus years uh, of experience in software development, uh, which involves complex web app development, mobile app development, SaaS channels, and various uh, enterprise products that have developed for the customers. And uh, I also have extensive uh, designing and developing uh, uh, experience, development experience in analytic solutions. So mainly specialized in various kind of analytic solutions for uh, big data and uh, other type of data. Uh, then I have worked for variety of domains uh, during this years, uh, including healthcare domain, pharmaceutical insurance, banking, uh, defense, and now retail sector as part of Danambi. And uh, also worked in few countries, so I have a global exposure. Uh, I have traveled around the places uh, for my work. I worked in uh, India for a decade, then in America for a while, and then in UK, I'm here for uh, about a decade now. So that gives me a good, uh, uh, you know, uh, rich experience to work with uh, different uh, culture people with uh, the customers with different uh, cultures that how they think, how they behave. And again, behavior is our data in Dunhambi and that is most important. So uh, these all things in a way uh, has uh, kind of influenced me 
uh, to be in Danhambi. Uh, in my uh, roles, I've done variety of roles. So it's not just the uh, uh, development roles. So I have uh, led small and big teams in a uh, broad uh, section of the uh, technologies uh, from .NET, even I started my career back in Java, then VB and then .NET all technologies, various kind of cloud providers I've worked with. So managed uh, various teams in all these aspects, uh, worked in some kind of due diligence activity to win some uh, 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 yeah, customers and projects for my previous company. So worked in pre-sales, project management, and uh, leading uh, crucial projects, migration projects, and all that. So uh, uh, with all this experience, um, I was uh, looking forward for a change and where should I go? And uh, I have a very good friend. One of my friend works with Danambi for about a decade now. And I know from her, she works in UK itself. So I, from her, I know I've learned a lot about Danambi culture. And I was really, really got interested in Danambi. And uh, I was uh, looking forward for an opportunity, right opportunity for me to start in Danambi. And fortunately, I found that uh, about six months ago. And uh, uh, yeah, so I thought, OK, just give it a chance. And uh, I know a lot about Danambi, wanted to be in Danambi uh, uh, for uh, uh, the business that it is doing and for mainly the culture that it follows. And the employee satisfaction is very good in Danambi, very high rating. So I uh, uh, I was interviewed during the uh, COVID pandemic, obviously, everything happened virtually and it was a stress-free pro uh, uh, process, I would say. HR has done a fantastic job. job. Uh, so uh, I'm just sharing a bit of uh, about my recent interviewing experience as well. So it is just fantastic. You get quick feedback and um, it's a collaborative session when it comes to interviewing. So it is, uh, I was, uh, so when um, uh, they interview people here, they not only look for the prescribed role that, okay, I want this, this, this person. They will also try and uh, bring out the best in you that what you have done and how you can make a difference in Danambi. So that is also very important when it comes to Danambi. So uh, my past experience has helped me a lot uh, to be in this role. And uh, 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 frankly speaking, I'm just loving uh, being in Danambi for last six months. And it is exactly how I imagined it is. It would be because the main aspect is there is a continuous, uh, there is a focus on continuous learning and development. So you have easy access to all sort of training materials and the training sites like Udemy Plural site. That, that means a lot to me that I can uh, uh, train myself on the job. You get one day uh, off for training in a month and you have to update yourself, then go to the wider team and tell them that what you have learned and explain things. And then there is a lot of brainstorming discussion that happens. So for me as a uh, developer and as a technical person, these are very important things that happens in Danhambi. And uh, we are always looking for ideas here and how to implement there. And uh, uh, so it's it's just brilliant. And uh, the most important thing about Danambi is, uh, I mean, uh, of course, there is a, a work-life balance that uh, Danambi always supports. And uh, even during pandemic and COVID, uh, uh, you know, the scenario, that the situation that we are going through. So we have been given a lot of uh, support from Danambi, uh, which is excellent. Uh, and uh, uh, in terms of uh, overall uh, encouragement, so appreciation, 360 degree feedback, everything is perfect. And as 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 I would expect to be in new company and gives me a good career path into that company. So that is important. Uh, the another important thing about Dunhambi is a lot of companies work with data, but Dunhambi has very stringent rules when it comes to how they handle customer data. And that makes me so proud that I'm within Dunhambi because uh, it takes data very, very seriously. So it uh, so uh, it it does not mean that you can do anything with data, although it is data science company. And just because you have access to data, you can do anything with it. It follows its ethics. There is segregation of customer data and tight security and stringent policies as to how you are using the customer data. And that is how Danambi, I would say, is kind of standing out from other data companies for me and even for the other people. And uh, that is why it is one of the most trusted brands when it comes to 
handling of data and people really, really trust Dunhambi with their customer data. And uh, that's why I think we are uh, winning a lot of, uh, you know, uh, uh, bids and uh, Fortune 500 companies and even tech giants, they want to work with Dunhambi uh, for the way it handles data and respects the uh, customer privacy and all. So, uh, yeah, this is all, you know, apart from what my other colleagues have said it. And as we have seen that they are already here for about a decade. And that is what happens once you are into Danambi. I've seen people moving out of Danambi and again coming back to Danambi. So I've met such colleagues as well. And it's fantastic. Diversity is at the, um, uh, uh, is, is the uh, main focus. And uh, it's, it's just fantastic being in Danambi. And so, yeah, thank you very much for having me here. Thank you so much, Manjiri. It's so brilliant to hear not only that Dunhumbi has so many kind of learning and development opportunities and that you actually get to take that time, go away and then come back and share with your team exactly what you've learned, but that you're seeing colleagues who have maybe left and they're coming back. Mira is actually telling me about this herself the other day. A lot of people seem to see that, which is just, it's a testament to the business, isn't it? I think finally, before we move on, we're going to hear from Mariama. Hello, can you hear me? Excellent, cool. So I'll start off, I'm going to do it in a structure and I think that's the applied data scientist in me. I really do like my structure and fixed. So I'm going to start off with my working journey and then I'll go on to why Dunhambi and then my role. So my name is Mariama Commander and I'm an applied data scientist at Dunhambi currently. So I'm going to give a quick overview as to what I was doing before that. So I finished university about four years ago and I studied statistics and um, when I studied statistics, it was actually like a bit of a coin toss because I really liked English. And I kind of was good at statistics as well. And I was kind of good at maths, but employability and all else and like future endeavors, I went for statistics instead. But even though that's what I decided to go with and it wasn't necessarily like my first choice, um, it's turned out to be like the best thing I've ever done because you just need to find the beauty in whatever you do in your role. And I found that when you can do data science and when you can do apply data science such as I do, you can tell a story through the data. You've got your beginning, your middle and your end. And if anyone's on this call that has done it, it's like a pearl, it's like point, explain, you know, example. And that's what I found in my job that I find so fulfilling. Um, of course, Dunhambi is a great place to work. Of course, we've got great data. But what I found at university and bringing it over into Dunhambi is that you can tell a story, you've got the insights at the end, you've got the hypothesis, or you've got something that the client wants to know. You go back, you scramble together, you come together with a wacky brief, it's not always wacky, or you come together with some useful KPIs and you're giving the retailer something that they hadn't known before, you're giving them a new overview, you're giving them a new lens on something they would have never considered. So you're giving them that journey, you're actually walking them through that story from beginning to end so you can they can go forward and make something out of something they didn't realize they needed and I think that's what's so great about Dunhambi for me I've kind of answered to you and one there for you but before that when I was at university I actually did two internships at banks and when you do an internship in a bank I'm not too sure how many people have it's a very niche and specific place to be when you're like 19 years old and some you've got lots of men around and oftentimes they're white and you, you're a black young woman, it's not really the place you want to be. You're not necessarily doing the kind of analysis you want to be doing. So coming to Dunhumby and reading up on, about them being so customer centric and the fact that you could do data science, you can do machine learning, you can pull useful KPIs that are so useful and, and all that other stuff. It just makes more sense for me to have come here after going into such a space as banking, not to like knock it. So being in a data science company such as this, and the testament is here today, we're like we've got all these women on the panel and I think it's very rare to see so many, especially in science in such a high level as well. So that's what really drew me in. And speaking about boomerangs of people that left and came back, I'm actually a boomerang. I left for a while and came back. So my career is only four years, but in that four years I've had lots of different companies and Dunhambi has always been head and toes above them because of the people that you work with, just the vast data and the fact that you know that you're going to make a difference at the end. The clients are always so grateful for the insights and the way in which we look at data because we are very rigorous in the things that we do. So that's always great. 
and a bit about my role. So I've gone on about data a lot and I've said I'm applied data scientist and oftentimes people hear about data scientist. It's basically the same thing. We get huge wads of data and we tell a story from it. We interrogate it, we aggregate it, we cut it, we screw it in whichever way is relevant. We apply machine learning if relevant, we do A-B testing if relevant. And then you come out with something that's useful for people to go on and make a decision off. So that is essentially what my job entails. But when it comes to Dunhamby, I think it is just a great place to work because of the diversity of thought. You've got managers left, right and center willing to uplift you and hold you to the highest standard. And I think for me, that's probably the most important thing that I've gotten since being here. Thank you. Amazing. Thank you so much for sharing your experience, Mariana. Dunhumby sounds incredible. I mean, I'm sat here like for a different company, like, oh, off opportunities, joking, joking. But um, honestly, it's so great to hear from you all. It's just so positive and amazing. And Dunhumby clearly sounds like such a compelling place to work, which is brilliant because now we're going to have Mira and Madison talk to us about recruitment opportunities and how that all works at Dunhumby as well. Thank you, Daisy. Um, and thank you all to our speakers for their insight. I think it's been great hearing your experiences and journeys um, as your colleague. I've, I've learned a lot as well, so thank you. Um, I'm sure participants um, on the session are really keen to, to ask some questions. So I'm not gonna take too much of your time, but um, yeah, as Daisy mentioned, um, my name's Mira, I work in the talent acquisition team here at Dunhumby. Um, and throughout the session, we've spoken a, a lot about data scientists and, and engineered job profiles, but just wanted to highlight that we have opportunities um, in many other areas too, including security, technical account management, um, infosec, just to name a few within our experienced hire space, um, but also um, graduate opportunities for those just starting out their career in, in a technical career. So um, I guess if you've been inspired by our speakers today and are interested in applying for um, any technical role, then firstly, please have a look at our careers page. Um, but if you haven't seen anything there which ticks the, the box um, that you're looking for, then we'll be sending through a follow up from this um, session tomorrow. So you can register your details and send through um, your CV and someone from the talent acquisition team will, will be in touch. So I'm going to hand back over to Daisy for our Q&A now. Amazing. Thank you, Mira. And yes, obviously, if you are interested in roles at Dunhumby, please make sure to send in your details when we send everything over tomorrow, because it's just such a fantastic company. And the panellists today are just a testament to it. So I'm going to get started with our Q&A session. Um, and I'd love to kind of start by asking our panelists, you know, I'd love to know more about what advice you'd give for other young women looking to start a career in technology. Alison, if we could start with you. Yeah, sure. So um, my advice is um, possibly a bit more general, just generally about kind of how, how to progress your career. Um, but I think it's quite relevant for um, women in tech who, you know, we know we are the minority at the moment. Hopefully that will change over time. Um, so my my advice, I've got a few things. Um, one would be take every opportunity that comes your way. Um, there will definitely be points where things are presented to you and you don't think you're up to it and you don't think you're ready for it. If someone else has faith in you, just go with it and take that opportunity. I've had a lot of moments in my career where I've I've really thought no I'm not ready for this promotion I'm not ready for this new role and I've just kind of blindly given faith to the person that's offered it to me and, and it's worked out really well and really helped me progress so just take every opportunity that comes your way um, also uh, find the things within your role that really interest and excite you and that you feel passionate about and it might not be the most obvious thing um, something that I've learned over my career is actually a part of the role that I love is the management and engagement with people I love helping people develop and progress their careers and so having recognized that that's something that I'm genuinely really passionate about I've started putting a lot more time and focus into that and actually that's had a knock-on effect of raising my profile because I'm, I'm getting involved in um, forums and discussions and, and initiatives around those things and I've got real passion and people can see that and I'm starting to kind of grow my profile there and, and develop a new network so if you can find the things that genuinely talk to you and excite you, you're going to be really successful in them and people will recognize that and that will lift you up. Um, and then the, the last thing is um, 
something that actually has been a, more of a recent learning. So hopefully people can, you know, save the 10 years it took me to get to this and just take my advice, which is to um, think about what unique thing you bring to every group that you're in. So for a long time in, in my career, I felt like I was quite different from the people around me um, in the way that I thought about things and the, and the priorities I put on things. And I thought that I needed to be more like them to be successful because they were the successful people I was trying to be like. And it's taken me a while to realize that actually bringing a different perspective and a different challenge and a different way of thinking is what has got me in those rooms in the first place and that has really, um, it's the value that I can bring. And I now have much more confidence in bringing that kind of unique and different perspective. And it has, um, it's really been great for my career. So uh, it took me a long time to have the confidence and the recognition of that. So I'm hoping some people will be smarter than me and, and pick that up sooner and, and, and have more success for it uh, earlier in their career. I love that perspective. Thank you for sharing as well. Um, Shruti, I'd love to get your perspective on this too. Uh, I think a lot of it did cover, get covered by Alison, uh, but I will want to just, you know, reinforce on sometimes your peers and your managers or seniors can see something in you which you don't, and that's very important to take back and reflect. Uh, and again, just looking at my professional journey, I've had a lot of conversations and arguments with my managers where they said I had something, uh, a skill, which I didn't agree at that point. But looking back, I know that I had that skill to do the job that I'm doing right now. Um, I think the other thing I would say is irrespective of the opportunity that's being offered to you, definitely take it, right? And people's passions, people's purpose evolve in life. My purpose 12 years ago was like, yes, I wanna be a, you know, a full-time coder. This is what I really love and stuff like that. And now it's gone to a point where I wanna be at, you know, working with clients, building new products and solutions, right? So don't, 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 don't be too stubborn or close-minded in what, op, what you wanna do if you have an opportunity and if you don't still have a clear purpose in life, go for it. Amazing. Um, I guess my next question is, why should women consider a career in technology? And Manjiri, if I could start with you, please. Yeah, sure. So uh, I think career choice is very personal. And I would say that you must do what you want to do, what you are most interested in doing, and uh, you're passionate about doing. And uh, you spend, uh, you know, your day's most productive time into your job. So unless you are happy in your heart that, okay, this is what I'll be do, I should be doing, uh, don't do it. That is first advice. So uh, if you want to be developer, be developer. Uh, for example, in my case, I, uh, like I said, I've worked in variety of roles. I have been a project manager, even um, uh, a kind of uh, a senior project manager uh, for uh, one of the projects. But I did not enjoy the uh, uh, kind of, uh, you know, management and all that kind of thing. So I, I was always creative. I wanted to write code. So every day if I wake up, I want to write code. I want to do some design. And software is kind of magic for us that you light, light, write one line of code and it changes so many things. So I think I was missing on that magic. And that is where I again started saying, no, I want to be writing code. And this is what I really want to be doing. So uh, find out uh, this passion in you. And uh, only uh, 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 there is one barrier when it comes to women in technology, because there are very uh, less role model here for us in women. So uh, uh, they don't consider this field sometimes. Or even if they consider it, they walk on the path for a while and then uh, somehow think that, oh, maybe it's not for me. So I have been in uh, uh, such situations where my friends have left uh, technology field just because of that. But I think it is slowly changing. And uh, uh, it's, it's just fantastic writing the code and just being on computer all the day writing code and seeing this magic happen. So just give it, I would say, give it a go. Give it a go. Definitely, you will love it. And if you don't love it, yeah, do whatever you want to be. I think that's brilliant advice. Give it a go. That's, I think, something that everyone should all live by. You know, if you don't, if you try it and you don't like it, that's perfectly fine. But, you know, give it a go. Um, Catherine, what's your perspective on this? Oh, 
I think you're on mute. Yep, sorry. You're fine, virtual events, eh? <laughs> um, this was, um, why should you have a career in technology, correct? Yeah. Okay, just clarifying, just distracting myself with the mute. Um, <laughs> so um, I would say, especially as someone who has switched careers, um, I spent a very short time in like a, well, a marketing type career. And I would say the biggest thing for me about a tech career is that you're always gonna be learning like forever. And um, you're probably never going to be bored. Um, as soon as you solve one issue, another one comes along. Not even an issue, but you build something and then you build something on top of it and um, kind of seeing what you can create and the fact that it is kind of limitless is um, it's it's just like I feel like I'm going to like always be growing and uh, yeah mostly just the learning I guess. I love that always growing that again it's such you know working in data and technology and engineering you that you're right it is limitless the opportunities are there you can really be so creative and I think Sometimes people believe that if you work in an engineering or a data role, it's not a very creative role, but actually it really, really is. It's just kind of changing your perception on that and changing the way you think. Um, another question that we've had is, I suppose, what changes do you each feel personally could be made to the curriculum or the culture in the US and in the UK to help women kind of choose a career in tech? And Mariama, I'd love to come to you first, please. Yes, um, sure. I think Manjuri actually kind of covered it. I think when it comes to diversity in the space, you need to see a role model. So for instance, um, I think I'm the only black female scientist at Dunhumby, and that's not just Dunhumby, this is at other companies I've worked at. But it's a case of, if you can't see something, how can you believe that it's possible? Like my two female managers, they're both female data science managers. That's something that I hadn't seen in other companies before. So I think it's kind of breaking the mold and it really does start here. And you can start it at school, of course. I think they're kind of putting policies in place and you've got loads of feminist movements. You've got the Me Too movement. You've got all of these things going on now where parents are explaining to their children that, you know, feminism isn't like a crazy thing that you assumed it was. Like you have all this ed educational material out there. So I think that's kind of taken care of now what we need to do in our space is ensure we have like sponsorship programs or you have mentorship programs to ensure that we can shift that dial now whilst we're already here and ensuring that young women who are coming up out of university or people who are already in the role now, they don't feel discouraged. They have a nice, safe environment to express themselves and truly be themselves within their role. They don't need to feel like I'm a woman. I can't do this. I'm an Asian woman. I'm a black woman. You need to ensure that the workplace has that kind of security for you. So it kind of, so I think it's two pronged. It's having the right kind of things in place in any business you go to. But I think like the younger generations, they kind, of, they more or less have it down pat. And I think businesses just need to ensure that they're reaching out to schools. So at Dunhumby, we have um, with our multicultural network, we're actually going out to schools and trying to get more diverse pool of people in, starting from the age of fourteen upwards because that's when people start freaking out about what you're going to be doing with your life so if you get them at that age and they can see that as like a black designer or there's an asian female manager who's doing developing that's already going to demystify some things that have already been in place so i think it's the outreach i think it's having the mentorship and i think it's schools carrying on what they're doing currently i couldn't agree more i think you have to focus on so many different touch points to make it right it's not good enough to just be like I believe in diversity it's so much more than that I completely agree um Shruti I'd love to hear your thoughts on this as well sure um uh so, you know I'll, I'll speak a little bit about what schools in India can probably also help in this because again a large part of my education has been there and I think uh, I think all of us like what what I have learned is you know, there are a lot of people who are looking for that role model 
or that mentorship uh, opportunity from all of us, like who are actually working who are, who are actually working or in this field. And uh, I've had people reach out to me on LinkedIn, say, hey, I just want to talk to you to like how to navigate this data science field. I think probably formalizing a process around it would be so help, so much helpful to a lot of women, you know, who are scared about, like, I'm not sure if I'll do well, you know, I don't have a computer science or an engineering background, so maybe my coding does, isn't, isn't that going to be that great. Uh, then navigate through that. I think a lot of us also in the data science field, and something that I've learned on the job is, you know, how to communicate and translate complex problems and solutions and you know, translating it for our clients more effectively. Uh, and that's something I feel is not, is something that's lacking a lot of in our education or curriculum. And I think that's something that also should be our focus in like, you know, how do you explain something that, that you want to explain to your mother? And that's, that's an advice I probably got about like eight or nine years in my, you know, ago in my career. And that's really helped me shape how I articulate my uh, thought process. How do I communicate? And I think those are probably the two things I would say is, you know, let people reach out to you, be, a, be available, give them opportunities on, and feedback on what they can do to navigate in this field. And also, and as part of our education curriculum is how do we make complex problems easier for folks to understand? I can, again, I completely agree. Amazing, really interesting, and really great to get your perspective on this as well, especially as you've had that kind of different experience. Um, Alison, we've had a really great question for you, actually. Obviously, you mentioned parental leave earlier, and Ruth has asked, do you have any tips for keeping sharp and kind of up to date with the latest advances in technology and kind of your career in general during taking that parental leave? Yeah, that's a very good question. Um, and it, I think it's a, a concern for lots of um, parents taking a, a chunk of time off. And um, I don't know anyone that's come back after parental leave that hasn't had that kind of that nervousness and that that dip in self-confidence thinking I'm not going to be up to speed I'm not going to be as relevant um, so it's a really good question um, the first thing I would say is certainly don't worry about it for the first few months <laughs> because those first few months are crazy your life your body your hormones everything's turned upside down um, so you know your focus should just be on kind of survival mode to be honest um, and then after that as you know as your life starts to get into hopefully some kind of routine and, and you start to have a bit more um, headspace and, and energy and time for yourself um, then uh, a really good thing to do is, is think about kind of points in the day where you can um, do a bit of reading maybe listen to a podcast um, I listened to a lot of podcasts when I was on parental leave because I spent a lot of time sitting feeding the baby um, and so having a podcast on in the background is a great way to kind of absorb information um, and also um, what I found is that even when I didn't feel I had the energy to to kind of learn anything or, or think about anything actually switching a, a completely different context and a completely different subject so going from childcare and then maybe putting the baby down for a nap and then you've got an hour to yourself and you think oh, I'm too tired to do anything but actually it can really energize you to to read something um, you know, online or, or do some research, read some articles. Um, you know, LinkedIn is great. There's people are always sharing stuff on LinkedIn. So just having a look on there and, and getting into some articles and reading about kind of the, you know, any any interesting developments actually kind of buoys you up and brings that energy back because you're doing something totally different. And it also gives you a little taste back of what it's like to be a person that isn't just looking after a baby all the time, which is hard work. So um, they, that was kind of the, the way that I tried to do it. Brilliant, thank you. I don't know if anyone else on the panel has the perspective of being a parent, but if you do, please feel free to share. Yeah, I can share on that. So yes, like 100% uh, like what Alison said, same things, just to extend on that. 
in my case, uh, I took a break of about three years uh, between my career. I had back to back babies, my son and my daughter. So I thought, OK, once they are both of them are uh, good enough to go to nursery, then I will start again. And by that time, I wanted to care for them, be there. So I did that. And because it was a long time. So of course, like Alison said, I kept reading about things. I already had plural site account, which I kept uh, uh, watching my videos to keep me updated on what is happening in technology field and what are the rare skills that people are looking for that I can develop. And when I join back, I'm ready for the job to you know, take on. Apart Apart from that, I did a very uh, uh, funny thing probably, but uh, uh, I was in India for some time, uh, six to eight months, and I knew uh, a few of my cousins and he, he, he was doing his engineering uh, in the university and they were working on a software uh, uh, website. And they were trying to prove something very unique thing and that was their kind of final year engineering project. So I said, can I get involved with you guys and can I work with you so that, you know, I can write the code. And uh, that is one thing I did. So I just got involved with my cousin and his uh, uh, project in the university. It, it was fun and it was kind of, you know, again, getting back to that mode that you actually are getting some tasks to do. You have a timeline, you have a deadline. So I felt that uh, I, I have heard this many times from my uh, uh, friends and all that it is very hard. The first couple of months are too hard just to be in office for eight hours or so. But I found it uh, comparatively easy because I think uh, uh, in the later phase of that three year break, I kind of prepared myself for last six months to be there and to be productive uh, right from the first week that I'm there. So yeah, the, these are you know some things uh, I did. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. No, it, it honestly, it's so good to hear your experiences on that and just kind of how to kind of keep yourself motivated and sharp and kind of keep things ticking along. Um, sadly, we have run out of time. Um, I've taken a note of everyone's questions and we will make sure that every single question is answered in our follow up email tomorrow, I promise. Um, but I just wanted to say a huge thank you to all of our panelists for joining us today and to Mira and Madsen for putting on this amazing event um, from Dunhumby. So thank you so much, everyone. Like I say, you'll get a follow up email from us tomorrow. This session will be available to watch afterwards. We'll have it on our YouTube channel, on Dunhumby's YouTube channel and obviously across social media as well. So, yeah, thank you so much, everyone, for your time. This has been such a brilliant session. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.